Hi there and welcome back. The current session we're going to be working on is the hands-on Windows 8 app design with paper prototyping. I'll be your host, Warren Line, and you can reach me at any time at wline at partnerpedia.com. Partnerpedia is a gold partner with Microsoft and we do a lot of work on Windows 8 application development. A lot of the components that we're going to discuss today we actually employ in our design sessions here at Partnerpedia. So let's begin. So why sketching? Well first of all it's a great way for you to initialize the design session of your application to begin the brainstorming process that will ultimately lead to the development of your app. First off, it's obviously much less expensive to work through UI issues with pen and pencil. Paper is cheap, pencil is cheap, and it's very easy to change your ideas, jot down those of others, quickly move them around, and discard them at your leisure. Of course, it also facilitates the ability to give you a lot more focus on the experience itself rather than the actual implementation. And lastly, it's faster iteration of initial concepts. The ability to move around features, items, components of your UI design are much easier done on pen and paper. Usually the cornerstone of doing the sketching is creating something which we call the best at statement. The best at statement is truly going to be the component of your application that identifies from a high level what your app is going to achieve. In addition to the best at statement, there are two other components that really combine together to create a great sketching scenario. One is the scenarios themselves. These scenarios are components that support your best at statement as far as what your application is going to achieve. In addition to those scenarios, you're also going to want to identify features. Those are specific tasks that are performed within the application that achieve your scenarios that complete the best at statement. So let's start off by creating a best at statement. Here's a couple guidelines that will help you through. First of all, within a best at statement, you really want to be specific. You want it to have one sentence and you want it to be truly differentiated. If you're writing multiple sentences or creating this really complex best at statement, then you're not really achieving the functional idea of a best at statement. For example, this app is the best app in its category at blank. Here, pretty much all you have to do is fill in the blank with a well thought out statement that of course is one sentence, specific and truly differentiated. When you're doing this best at statement, of course recognize what your app is best at, and this will help you to recognize before you start what direction your application is heading in. This will also allow you to focus on scenarios and features that add value to your application. And the best at statement should guide you through the design and development process. Here's an example of one. Food with Friends as an application is the best app in its category at helping users and their friends find a restaurant to eat tonight. Immediately you're able to see that this application is going to try to achieve a specific goal. That being finding a restaurant to eat at tonight. So now that we've created our best at statement, the next step in the process is to begin to identify scenarios that support your best at statement. These scenarios are going to be slightly higher level directions that your app is going to take to achieve that best at statement. So let's start to look at some of the fundamentals of those. First off, only pick scenarios that directly support your best at statement. 
The key here is to not add scenarios for items that you think might be of interest or of value to anything other than that best at statement. So what exactly is a scenario? Well, scenarios represent these possible situations that can occur within the usage of your application. In reality, they're an imagined sequence of possible events, an imagined set of circumstances that help those users reach their goal. So once you've determined your best as statement, start focusing on the users of your application. Envision the methods in which people will use your app, and these will be your scenarios. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's a third component, which are your features. So a good way to distinguish between scenarios and features is that scenarios being goals that users want to achieve using your app, and features being the means to the end, but not the ultimate goals. For example, a feature of a messaging app may be to change the font styles, bold the text, or change the color, but it's not a scenario. You don't use a messaging app so that you can bold your text. You use it so that you can communicate your thoughts in real time to your friends. A great way to start working through this lab is to do a brainstorming session on scenarios. There is no wrong or right thing to write down here during your brainstorming session, so feel free to just begin jotting down anything that pops in your mind that of course relates to your best at statement. You can do this for yourself or with others in a collaborative session and think about the goals that you're trying to reach. Here you can see the results of us brainstorming possible scenarios for the Foods and Friends app. Don't restrict yourself at this stage. Think of every possibility. We'll then go through the filtering aspect of this afterwards. Now that you have a great collection of scenarios, your next step is going to be to remove some of those scenarios that don't support your best at statement. If you have a great scenario that does not align with your best at statement, it may belong in another app, just not in this application. The reason for doing this, of course, is to really streamline your design sessions. You're, going, you're not going to want to be creating designs for 50 different scenarios. You're really going to want to focus those scenarios down into a few specific items. So let's begin by removing some of these scenarios. Remove the items that are not goals, but are features that help you use, or scenarios that help a user reach a goal. Can you see any here that you might think that should be removed? Well, a good one is search for a restaurant. It's not really a scenario, it's more of an action that's going to be performed. The same with reading a review. This is more like content interfacing. This isn't what the scenario is going to occur. Business deal, details, prices, locations, same premise. View, send, or print directions. Again, these are actions. View or share, anything with with sharing and viewing, these kind of things, um, seeing suggested restaurants, writing anything, um, bookmarking. Again, these are all actions. These are things that might um, instead be better uh, added into the features section. Create an app, an account, and profile. Set or change a location. So now that we've removed some of these scenarios, and the previous ones were really great scenarios, but we've really started to hone in on how they align with our best at statement. We also want to remove any that are non-supporting. For example, interact with restaurant owners. It's interesting, but does it distract the user from what the app does best? Find activities, also interesting, but this is about where I want to eat. I only want to think about my friends and where I want to eat. Catalog all restaurants I've been to. Again, not really the focus of my application. Share with my friends. I'm not really looking to push this into a social media component. Again, these also might be um, scenarios that your app could evolve to, but initially you want to stay laser focused on what you're trying to achieve and hitting your best ad statement. 
This has enabled us to really streamline these scenarios into three major components. Find restaurants that my friends want to eat at. This is almost a, a reiteration of your best at statement. Find restaurants that I want to eat at and make dinner plans for tonight with friends. So now we want to look at choosing the right features. The features are going to be the actual components and tasks that people perform within your application. You can really think of it as the reason why people will use your app to satisfy your scenario. It's the way that they will achieve that specific scenario. So how do you choose the right features? Every feature makes one of the scenarios great. This is a good point. If your feature is not making that scenario great or improving it or enabling your users to facilitate that scenario, then maybe it's not a great feature for this list. Every feature will be used by most users. Again, you want to add features that are relevant to the overall application. If they are very specific esoteric features that potentially only ever used once or twice, those might not be ones that you want to add here. And of course you want to be specific with your features. Broad level features might be more of a scenario. So let's get going here. Let's start brainstorming our features. Again, when you brainstorm features, consider what type of features you want to include in your app and select them based on what you think they can support your scenarios. It's important to create a complete list of every possible feature you want to include before you start the layout of your content. Here's a great list. Again, no right or wrong, just jot down and brainstorm what you're looking to achieve. As in before, you want to start questioning the features that you've added. The first step to providing a good feature set is to then eliminate features that don't support your scenarios. Here's our food and friends best at statement and main scenarios. We will take the complete feature list and cross out any features that don't support them. Remember our three scenarios, things like review of the day, find nearby business, message boards. organize events, ask questions, bold italic underline of review text, adjust review font size. Again, these are aspects of the application that might be useful, but aren't really features that you're trying to focus on within your design session. Another set of features that are already included within a Windows 8 application are those that will be provided via your charms. Charms allow users to use common commands across multiple applica applications and offer a consistent UI model. Charm charms are accessed by swiping from the right side, positioning the mouse to the lower left of the canvas, or by pressing the Windows key plus C. What you're gonna wanna do here is as you're going through, you're gonna wanna ask yourself which features Take advantage of the charms. For example, search for a restaurant. Well, this is already included in the search charm, so you're going to want to leverage that search charm for this particular feature. Share photos of a restaurant. Well, there's a share charm, so you're going to use the share charm as the way to share anything within your application. Again, share with friends. This relates to your share charm. Log in, log out. These are settings already included within your Windows 8 application and part of the share charms. Create an account, again, part of the settings included in your charms. Set or change a location, and share my review. The next thing we're going to want to rem remove within these features are those that are related to the content. These are ones that do not require commands. And these are ones that are related to potential actions that the users will just naturally perform within your application. 
such as read or review. This is related to content. This isn't necessarily a feature of your application. This is just going to be something that people do when they interact with your app. Get business details and prices. Rate a restaurant. Again, these are all things that are going to be potentially performed within the application, but aren't necessarily features of that application. Submit and cancel a review. Reply to a suggestion. View my friends' wish lists. Browse by restaurant or category. Lastly, you're going to want to remove any features that are based on system features. These are things like cut, copy, paste. Those are incorporated within your system itself. That's a right-click feature that's included in any Windows application. So we'll remove that one. Now you're left with a final feature list. These are ones that have been either covered by charms, laid out as part of the content, or take advantage of the system UI, and features that you think are relevant to your scenarios. Our next step here is to take these features we've identified and begin to align them to the three scenarios that we had set up earlier. So as you can see, I'm starting to actually put the features into the specific categories that align with the scenarios. At this point, you can start to imagine how your new application is going to start to work how that workflow is going to start to expand. Begin to then take those features and group them as well. You're going to want to categorize them into higher level groupings. These higher level groupings will ultimately become what you're going to design in your UI sketch session. They're going to be your main navigation pieces, your main interface pages, and so forth. So at this point in time, your lab is set up to do your three major components that we discussed earlier. Creating a best ad statement, so of course be specific, be one sentence, be truly differentiated. Brainstorm the scenarios that will support that statement, remove any that don't support the best ad, remove features to other pages and then choose the right features for those scenarios. Scenarios accomplished via those features. Eliminate features that don't tie directly to scenario and then of course group them by those scenarios. You can pause the lab here to complete those three tasks and hit play once you're ready to begin again. The next section we're going to discuss is getting into more of the navigation and the physical components that are included within a Windows 8 application. The navigation patterns are extremely important because they're how your users are going to interface and interact with your application. You want your navigation to be as intuitive as possible and to follow a few specific guidelines. Navigation patterns can be broken down into a couple of main patterns. The first pattern being a hierarchical pattern. This pattern is great for things like large collections of related content. An example of this might be a newsreader application. Your content is separated into sections, levels of detail, and patterns provide intuitive navigation that promote discovery. These are items that are already incorporated into the natural navigation of Windows 8 applications. With the hierarchical pattern, the designer should always include scenarios for their best at statement on the hub or main portion of the hierarchical pattern, and then add related content in the section and detail screens, so it's easy to navigate between these. Here's an example of what I was talking about. 
you see the home page is the hub page or level one. This is really the heart of your application. This is going to provide the navigation for all of your content and invites users to discover content and scenarios. The second tier will be your sections page, focusing on the content in that section. And it shows enough detail to allow navigation. Content can be displayed in any form that best represents the scenario and content in the sections. The section page represents a related group of content and consists of individual items, each of which have its own details page. Sections may also take advantage of grouping and a panorama or layout. The third tier, known as a details page, is where the individual items are displayed the format of which may vary tremendously depending on the particular type of content that you have. But the details page consists of items, details, or functionality. Detail pages may contain a lot of information or may contain a single object such as a picture or video. Generally speaking, when you're developing a hierarchical pattern, you want to keep in mind that three to five uh, levels are really as deep as you want to go. If your pattern is including levels 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 levels deep, this is too much. The user will be easily confused and they won't be able to navigate seamlessly through your application. If you have more than 3 to 5, potentially reconsider the design of your application. Our next design platform is known as a flat platform. The flat one has one navigation level that works great in fast switching content scenarios like browsers, documents, and games. It's this right, even games work very well from flat patterns. They have a direct linear association of how to navigate between content. So why don't we start to work through our particular scenarios and best at statements we had earlier and see how those align to our hierarchical pattern design. First of all, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the scenarios you have map to the sections in your hub or your home pages. The hub consists of different categories or sections of content, each of which maps to one of the scenarios that you created in your design process. For example, in the Food and Friends app, the hub includes content that addressed our three scenarios you can see here. Page one, making dinner plans for tonight with friends. Page two, finding restaurants that my friends want to eat at. And page three, find restaurants that I want to eat at. The next aspect of this is then to begin to draw your three-tiered linear mapping. In this case, you can see what we've done is we've actually started to add some navigation cues. The blue lines that we've sketched here represent some of the workflows that users might encompass when they're interacting with your application. For example, clicking on an item in your hub page might take you to your scenarios page or your details page, depending on how the navigation flows. You can see with this friend in the food and friends, that some of the hub items are connected to the section pages. Not all sections have to continue into a deeper dive. It's really based on the needs of the user and what is available on one screen to the next. Doing one of these will begin to give you a great idea of the workflow of your application to sort of give a user experience feel to interacting with your app. Again, here we have the opportunity to begin to work through the second component of this lab. You'll be designing your navigation to make your app easy to navigate and easy to explore. First, review your scenarios and content in your app. Is it better served by a hierarchical pattern? Is the data related? Or flat pattern? The data is unrelated and requires fast switching. For the hierarchical pattern, think about your information architecture. Sketch your hub page, section pages, and details pages and how they are related. Don't worry about what goes on in the pages right now. We'll talk about that in the next session, but focus on how the pages are related. For the fat, flat pattern, think about the content in your app and how users will switch between pages. Sketch an empty page, focusing on navigation, and sketch a top bar for navigation. 
Focus on how users will manage navigation and how they will identify content in the top app bar to switch to the content they're looking for. Finally, walk through your scenarios and features via sketches. Is the navigation intuitive? The next section we're going to be looking at is commanding. Commanding is really how the users will be interacting with your application through tasks that they're going to be performing on your app. Here's a great example. Within our food and friends, we've removed the, the filter options and wrapped them into a more comprehensive command set stowed in a flyout menu until needed. Not only have we now reduced visual clutter, we've also provided a little more functionality such as choosing the rating right in line with the command. You can see along the bottom, this is an example of the app bar. These are where some of your commands might get stored. Command buttons can be seen here, being used on the canvas that are enabled to the core scenarios. You can see things like the social media component of being able to reply or finding flights. Any interaction within those pages that you're going to be performing are really the command pieces that you want to design out. When creating a content command, with the UI design, you might wonder where are all the controls that are used to be placed on the canvas. In Windows Store's app, these commands are placed on the edges, including app bars, like we saw before, and the charms. So they are within easy reach, and they don't take up valuable screen real estate. When designing your app bars, place commands according to the UX guidelines, and your app bars will be intuitive and easy to use. When the commanding is core to the app scenario, place it on the canvas to help you drive your scenario with the users. Let's work on component three of the lab, commanding. Remember, first review the scenarios and features as they are grouped to support. Think about scenarios, features, and pages. Think about context. What commands should appear throughout the entire app? What commands should appear on specific pages? What commands are better served via charms or settings? Then begin to create your command sets. What commands are functionally related? What commands apply to different view types? What commands apply to content when selected? What commands apply when multiple content items are selected? We'll give you time here to pause and begin to create these items. Now we're going to move on to a component called the Snap and Fill View. This is an aspect of Windows 8 applications that enable people to have their apps either on the side or top bars of their pages on their sites or with on the desktop of their Windows 8 PC. Here's a great example. As you can see, this image before you is a backdrop of your desktop. On the right hand side, you can see the application has been snapped to the right side of my screen. What you want to do to make sure is when you're using the snap and fill view, which is a requirement of Windows 8 applications, by the way, you want to tailor each one of your main hub pages to the snap view. Users of Windows 8 applications are going to be able to snap your application on any one of the main hub pages within the app. Remember, categorize each one of your items within your main hub, and each one of these sections represents one of the scenarios that we had from your future planning.
So here again, within this portion of the lab, you'll modify your Windows Store app design to account for different screen sizes and view states to help you reach the goal of creating a design that looks and works great on any device. First, you must consider screen size. This is important since the application will be resized once it's snapped to the side of the screen. Is your design better served by an adaptive layout using a majority of content consumption management and creation apps? Or a fixed layout suitable for games or game-like applications? For an adaptive layout, start with your hub page and annotate the following within the design. What portions of the layout will be fixed? What portion of the layout will be adaptive? Starting at 1366 by 768, how will you account for larger screen sizes? Showing more content? How will you account for showing more detail? What about managing white spaces? Next, consider designing for view states, particularly the snap view state. Snap is the only view state, as I mentioned earlier, that is required by the Windows Store, and it's important to have a great user experience. To design the snap state, do the following. Select one of your key app scenarios, Starting with the hub page, sketch each screen used in the scenario, taking the following into consideration. Layout. Sketch your layout for vertical planning using a stacking layout or multi-column layout if needed. App bars. Sketch your app bars on each page, taking into account the five button per row, two rows per app bar limit in Snap. And remember, are you able to keep feature parity in the Snap view? If not, review the feature with one of the lab proctors to get guidance on your snap view state. Now we're going to look at the tiles category. Tiles are an exciting aspect of Windows 8 that really enable you to share your information in a subset view. Some people call this info snacking or um, direct connection with the client. The nice thing about leveraging tiles is you're able to start to begin to build a brand of your app as well as create a scenario for stickiness to bring users back to your application. Here's a great example of some live tiles. They're rich and engaging content and they're usually held on the user's desktop. They run even when your app is not running. Their content can be updated via live, no live notifications. They can run off of local content. It can run off of uh, any CMS or backend system that you have that supports your live tile communication. You can have scheduled notifications using that local content. And of course, they can push and pull from any hosting location, such as a cloud server. The great thing is here is you can have images you can have topography-based content, or you can have a combination of the two. This tile is really the front door of your application. You really want to spend a good amount of time working on this because it needs to be compelling, as it's going to be what drives users back to your application and their daily interaction with your application. This can serve as a major differentiator from other apps in the store. Users will prefer an app with a great live tile. If users like your live tile, a prominent placement of the tile in the start will drive re-engagement with your app. If they don't like your tile, they can place the tile at the end of the start, turn off the updates, unpin it from the start, or possibly even uninstall the app. Another important thing to remember is that this is really the calling card for your application, so you don't want to have things like advertisements embedded in there that might distract from the overall user experience. So again with this lab, you'll design a live tile and toast scenarios, toast being those notifications that are sent to users on their desktops, that will draw users back into your app and drive your app's main scenarios. First, consider how your app will rep be represented on the start screen. Sketch your default tile and how you'll reflect your brand when the app is installed. Next, review your scenarios and content consumed or created by your app. What opportunities are there in the content that provide relevant personal updates to your users? Review the live tile templates and sketch tiles that represent your content that will drive your scenario. How often will the tile be updated? Will you support notification queuing? 
Second, will your app support secondary tiles? Sketch the secondary tiles and add the pin button to the app bar used to pin the tile. A good way to think about secondary tiles are those tiles that are related to subpages or content within your application. All of these subpages and content and features can ultimately be pinned to the start bar. These will help users with efficiency with accessing the specific features of your app that they find most useful. Finally, consider is your app scenarios built around time sensitive information for your users? Review the Toast templates and sketch your Toast notification. As I was explaining briefly earlier, Toast notifications are simple text topography based pop up notifications that are embedded into a Windows 8 application feature set. Thank you again for the time here, and hopefully this session has been informative for you. For additional resources, I'll go through a quick list of some of the items that we found very helpful within the sketch and design sessions. This is a great book by Bill Buxton called Sketching for User Experiences. This book really helps identify some of the main components that are effective when doing hands-on drawing and sketching of UI. This is a great blog site by Sarah Summers uh, called uxarray.com and this is an excellent blog site for identifying how to do some specific user experience based design components. And lastly if you go to uistencils.com slash product slash windows dash eight, you'll be able to find the Windows 8 stencil kit. This can be very helpful as it has all of the uh, UI charm information as well as command components that you would want to add to things like app bar designs. And of course, you can always visit design.windows.com for any additional information and any feedback. There's just one more thing that I'd like to add here. And we find that having a direction within design is a very good thing to have, but we do know that it's a creative process. So there is no dogma around that. There is no specific set of directions that you have to follow in order to properly design your application to your needs. This is merely a guideline to help you on a good path to identifying the best way to sketch and design your Windows 8 application. Thank you very much for the time today, and again, if you'd like to discuss any other Windows app designs, we'd be more than happy to connect with you. W-Line, L-Y-N-E, at partnerpedia.com. Thank you very much, and now, back to the next session.